welcome to another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about high strength low alloy steel. In specific, or in particular, we are going to be talking about 4130 chromoly steel. And I've got some 4130 chromoly thin walled tube here from our friends at Online Metals. Check them out for all your uh, home shop fabrication needs. Online metals, they've got six warehouses across the country and can get the metal you need to you in just a couple of days. Now let's talk about the chromoly steel, the 4130 versus mild steel. For instance, we're gonna pick your standard 1018 steel. Now where are the differences and where are the similarities? Well, let's start with weight. Chromoly and mild steel. When I refer to mild steel in this, we're going to be talking primarily about 1018 steel. Chromoly and 1018 both weigh about the same um, 0.284 pounds per cubic inch, I believe. Now, where the differences are going to come in are going to be in the strength, elongation, which is your ductility factor, and in the uh, alloys within the steel. Now, in the 4130 chromoly steel, you're going to find, of course, the chrome, the molybden molyb molybdenum, and also some silicon. Now, I'm going to read off the list here because my mind isn't that good about the um, actual percentages of the elements in the chromoly. The uh, 4130 chromoly steel is going to contain 0.28 to 0.33% carbon. 0.8 to 1.1 percent chromium, 97.3 to 98.22 percent iron, 0.4 to 0.6 manganese, 0.15 to 0.25 percent molybdenum, um, a maximum of 0 0.035 sulfur. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's phosphorus. A maximum of 0 0.04 sulfur and 0.15 to 0.35 silicon. Now how does this differ from the mild steel? Well, the mild steel is going to contain 0.14 to, let's be generous, 0.20% carbon. Um, the iron content is going to be 98% or greater. Um, there might be some manganese, 0.6 to 0.9 percent and the phosphor content is going to be about the same but you're not going to find the chromium and you're not going to find the molybdenum. Now hardness wise the uh, 4130 is considerably stronger on the Brunel hardness scale the 4130 comes in at 197 the mild steel at 126 and on the noob scale 219 for the chrome molly and 145 for the mild steel. All right, let's talk about welding the 4130 chromoly. Preparation, fillers, processes, all that. Probably the most popular process for welding 4130 chromoly steel is going to be the TIG process if you're building roll cages, uh, experimental airplanes, things like that. That's what's going to be required. Preheat. Do you need to preheat? Because this is a medium carbon steel. It is not a low carbon steel like 1018. Well, if the thickness is greater than, I have to look this up, pardon me, 0.12% or 0.12 thousand, 120 thousandths, yeah, then you're going to need to um, preheat. And the recommended preheating is 300 to 400 degrees. Now, this tubing we're using, which is a common thin wall, 0.6, I believe does not require preheating. All right, let's talk fillers. I like cherry in my pie, but apple's okay too. Nah, just kidding. Let's talk fillers for welding this. Um, your ER80, ER80S D2 is probably the most common filler material recommended. You can also do ER70S2 ER70S6, which is probably your most common filler material for mild steel, is not recommended for this, although some folks do use it. 
Now you will find some fabricators who like to weld their chromoly with stainless steel. The thinking being the chrome is part of the stainless steel. You want to add your filler metal with some chrome. Now that's okay to use as long as you're using a 310 or a 312 grade filler material. Anything else is going to cause cracking. Heat treating. Do you need to heat treat this after welding? For a thin wall tubing and such, no. Let it air cool absolutely positively, no quenching. What about cleaning? Yeah, you've absolutely got to clean this. It comes with mill scale like anything else. You're going to want to clean a half inch to an inch away from the weld. Um, is it magnetic? Yes, it is magnetic. I mean, it's 98% iron. Of course it's magnetic. And should it be back purged? I don't know, should it? Let's put it this way. Back purging your 4130 welds with pure argon is certainly not going to hurt anything and it will make the insides look pretty. Is it going to add anything to the joint? Nah, it's not required. But if you want to do it, go right ahead. Next, we are going to prep these tubes. All right, I don't have a tubing notcher, so the first thing I like to do is just clean everything off real nice with a flap disc. About an inch back from the end that I'm going to cope. Get the scale off. Then using um, one of these templates that you can get online, just inputting diameters and wall thicknesses, you know, you cut that out wrap it around your pipe and you're good to go. I like to use a uh, paint marker to mark everything off and then I color in the area to be removed. Helps my old eyes figure out what they're doing. Next I use a flap disc to make the initial cuts you don't have to be pretty or perfect here. I'm just scooping out most of the material. Then get the grinder and smooth it out to almost the complete dimensions. I like to leave a little bit of that paint marker on there for the final step, which is the flap disc again and smoothing everything out so that we can get a really nice fit. It'll never be perfect, but it will be very, very close. Is the order of the day when you're dealing with TIG welding especially so with the chromoly so a little bit of acetone to wipe down the work surface it goes without saying you're gonna wipe down your work pieces and also make sure you wipe down your filler and last thing blasting your uh, weldment with too much gas is never a good idea so I always check my gas and set it first I'm setting it for about 15 CFH here let's get into the welding here now what you're going to notice are a bunch of little short welds it's recommended to weld 4130 tubing joints like this in four quadrants so I'm welding one quadrant at a time and moving along and you'll notice I'm moving quite slowly and the reason for that is you want to keep the heat in here as much as possible you don't want to be shocking the metal in any way um, that extra carbon in there likes the extra heat that's why there's not going to be absolutely any quenching and it's kind of hard to see here but what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, sort of pulsing the pedal I'm kind of riding it up and down as I get to the thinner sections or places with a gap I'm kind of easing off the pedal and as I'm into the thicker sections of the metal I'm pushing harder on the pedal to get more heat into that joint 
Uh, you're never going to have a 100% perfect fit up. There's always going to be a space somewhere. You've just got to use your skills as a welder to overcome that. And one of the best ways to do that is by simply modulating the heat using the pedal. We just keep moving on around the joint slowly, adding filler, watching it uh, solidify, and there we go. One trip around is really all it takes, and we're good to go. All right, well, there's the money shot, as they like to say. I'm not the best welder in the world, but I'm not the worst. That's a pretty good weld on that chromoly tubing. You can see a little nipple there where I ended the weld. I could have done that a little better. It's hot. That's why I'm flipping it over like that. Everything is nice and covered. There are no rough spots. Everything is smooth. Chrome molly tubing. You can do it. Give yourself a little practice. Thanks for watching. I hope you like, comment, subscribe, come back for more. And check out onlinemetals.com. They've got the chrome molly you need.